Uh, Huey, uh, I don't want this to be an interview in the... Uh, Huey, uh, I don't want this to be an interview in the ordinary sense of the word. Uh, I would like to give you the opportunity to say whatever you have to say. Your trial, I believe, is slated to start on the 10th. <coughs> And once the trial has started, the whole relationship between uh, you and the outside world will in some way change. And what I would like you to do is use this as an opportunity, if you wish, to make a full statement. If you wanted to divide it between things that you are addressing to the black community and things you'd like to address to the white community, then that's all right, too. So. I, w I would like to be framed in whatever way you would like to uh, to have it done, and we can, you know, all of this that I'm saying now we can we can edit out, but I just as soon have it on tape uh, so that you can. Yes, um, I, I think that it could be interwoven in the uh, in the uh, complete conversation. Instead of making uh, uh, directing um, statements to the black community and then the white, we could uh, we could uh, direct both of them at uh, simultaneously. Fine, fine. Uh, well, I expect that you had enough people ask you about uh, your personal uh, involvement in how it all got started and so on. I do you want to go into any more of that? <coughs> Well, uh, I think that uh, most people are aware of the uh, start of the Panther, but um, I could explain or recapitulate uh, because many people get the wrong uh, view of our organization that uh, the Black Panther Party is a uh, political party and that uh, we have a political uh, platform and uh, definitely a political aim that um, the, our aims and goals are liberation of the uh, black community, um, freedom of the black community, and in short, uh, political power of the black people, which we don't have at this point. And um, we feel that uh, black politics have uh, been mishandled uh, for many years, matter of fact, uh, it's been mis mishandled um, ever, ever since uh, black people started to engage in the uh, so-called uh, American uh, politics, and this was after uh, the Emancipation Proclamation and uh, black reconstruction. Uh, black people have been uh, misled uh, as far as uh, the uh, definition of uh, political power that um, during, uh, the, during uh, Black Reconstruction, um, many black people were led to believe that to have a political representative in office would uh, mean also uh, political power. Uh, the Black Panther Party has found that uh, this is not necessarily so, that the only way that uh, one can have political power is to have uh, a strong uh, base behind him, and uh, the people uh, are the backbone of this power. But um, during Black Reconstruction, where we had uh, some uh, black representatives in uh, Congress and uh, representatives from uh, many of the southern states where most black people were. Um, they were engaging in the, uh, a politics that was actually somewhat absurd uh, because they uh, were representing a people without power. And um, to explain this, that uh, we would have to examine the, uh, the nature of uh, the uh, black people's, the black masses situation in the South at that time. That, um, uh, after Emancipation Pro Proclamation that uh, black people were offered, uh, or promised rather, uh, land and equipment uh, so that uh, they could provide uh, for themselves. 
and uh, of course this uh, uh, this land was never given and in effect uh, all we were given was uh, these political representatives that were supposed to seek uh, rights and freedom for black people uh, these political representatives were uh, 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 any uh, non-effective uh, for the simple reason that no one had to listen to them in the political arena that they were operating in because they were they couldn't offer a political consequence after they expressed the desires of the people, uh, there was nothing more done. Simply, if there were, if the, if the uh, demands were not met, uh, because the people uh, didn't have control of the land or uh, the means of production at the time. So. Um, the people, the other uh, people, the white people in the political arena had a power behind them because they owned land, uh, they owned uh, uh, tools for production, and uh, thereby they controlled the land. And uh, these white politicians, when they didn't get what they wanted, uh, or if the people didn't get what they want, whom they represented, uh, then the people would... Uh, act in such a fashion to uh, deliver a, uh, a consequence uh, to the, uh, the general society. And they would do this by, um, uh, by not cooperating in, say, some, uh, some uh, industrial area or at the time, uh, some uh, feudal area, farm area. Uh, the farmers, uh, if they didn't feel that they were treated uh, fairly, uh, they simply wouldn't sell their goods uh, on the open market, uh, or on the uh, uh, they would uh, let their their uh, their uh, foodstuffs right in the field and uh, try to convince uh, the other people of society that they should be heard. Uh, black people were unable to do this, so they were left at a, at a level of a beggar because the political representative who was supposed to be representing us uh, would uh, demand um, certain rights, and uh, after uh, he didn't receive it, that uh, people were forced to be mute because they didn't um, they didn't have the the, uh, the tools to deliver this consequence. Well, this went on for some time, and finally, the uh, very political representative was ousted out of office. And I think that uh, and uh, after uh, he was ousted out of office, that uh, black people in general. Uh, um, remained in uh, primarily the same position they were, that they were in before he went into office. And in fact, they even quit voting largely. That's right. Uh, they were disillusioned uh, with the political arena uh, completely, that, uh, and rightfully so, uh, because while uh, the black uh, intellectuals at the time and the representatives, uh, many of them were very uh, Equipped, uh, they had been educated in uh, Canada and France and so forth. They were more educated than many, many of the uh, the white people in the South. So uh, the people uh, were disillusioned. The mass of the people were disillusioned with the uh, political arena completely. And uh, <clears throat> matter of fact, uh, they had some uh, reservations about it in the first place. While the black intellectuals and politicians were going around saying that we would get freedom uh, through the vote, uh, black people were chanting, in the days of Jubilee, we'll have 40 acres and two mules in the days of Jubilee. And uh, so the people uh, seemed to always recognize uh, where their real power was located. Um, it was the, uh, the black bourgeoisie or the uh, black intellectuals who were deceived. Um, after this, that uh, um, after black people were put out of the political arena, uh, we were um, in pretty near the same position as we were even before slavery. Matter in some instances even worse because uh, we were uh, uh, totally uh, unemployed, and uh, when we were enslaved, we were taken care of. Uh, it's uh, if you can say taken care of that. Um, we did get some food, and uh, we did have uh, uh, a shack to sleep in. But after uh, people, the white people, the Southerners didn't need us anymore. We didn't have any place to go. 
um, so uh, black people started to, uh, some started to come north uh, to the promised land. But to skip a period of time now, I would like to uh, make a correlation between the current happenings and uh, it seems that uh, history is never plays itself over again, repeats itself, but there are many similarities and things that happened in the past and the present. And uh, I'd like to point out uh, Adam Clayton Powell being put out of uh, office uh, in uh, New York, uh, and the people of Harlem, uh, because uh, they, had, uh, very, they have very little control, or matter of fact, no control over uh, any power area and the power power can be really divided or you can analyze it in uh, a, a couple uh, you have uh, economical power or industrial power and you have feudal power or control of land and uh, military power and um, according to John Hope Franklin that the reason black reconstruction failed was because of a lack of economical and military power that, um, matter of fact, uh, shortly after the Civil War, that uh, that uh, Abraham Lincoln was uh, very uh, um, very much afraid that if he didn't disarm uh, the uh, black people, that uh, we would uh, engage in guerrilla warfare and really gain our freedom or attempt to gain our freedom. So we were disarmed. So uh, even at the present time that uh, we lack uh, economical power, uh, uh, feudal power, and uh, military power. So um, <coughs> we're left in a position as uh, beggars in the political arena. Um, even up to this time that after Adam Clayton Powell was kicked out of, uh, out of uh, Congress that he was... Uh, um, um, that he was, uh, the black people could do little more than uh, voice an opinion about it. And um, if we were in control of economical power or even military power, we could have uh, engaged and uh, in, uh, caused a political consequence for the general power structure. But uh, because we've never had this power, um, there's been little progress as far as towards freedom. Um, at this time, the uh, Black Panther Party has, has realized of uh, power, and uh, we say that uh, power is the ability to 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 uh, define phenomenon and then make it act in a desired manner, and that uh, the uh, Black Panther Party has attempted to. Um, to uh, erect a power base by uh, educating the black community to what real power is about. And as we analyze it, that uh, it is impossible now for us to compete with the uh, enterprises and the uh, uh, people who control uh, the industry uh, simply because these people gain their uh, tremendous power through exploiting us in the first place. Slave labor uh, <clears throat> was the cause of the production or, or was the creation of the industrialized North. And uh, <clears throat> the uh, land that we were supposed to get, I understand the Standard Oil and uh, some other big monopolies uh, received that land. And of course, some white Southerners uh, uh, also uh, shared in this. Um, uh, in stealing this land from black people. So um, uh, the Black Panther Party says that we can't compete with the people who've uh, enslaved us to uh, gain their wealth, that uh, not economically, and uh, of course that uh, no one is going to give us any land. And uh, so we're left in a situation of having but one choice. And that choice is that uh, we are going to gain political power by any means necessary. And when we uh, really boil it down, we see that um, we only have a few means. And maybe uh, as uh, we see it, uh, uh, there's really no alternative. The black arm itself in a political fashion and uh, be a political threat to this uh, power structure. 
Uh, so we have the power of uh, potentially being destructive to this country. And that uh, the trend is now that uh, when black people are, um, are uh, brutalized, when black people are exploited to such an extent uh, that we can't stand anymore, you see a physical reaction. And uh, this is uh, in keeping with uh, Chairman Mao's statement that political power grows through the barrel of a gun and that uh, many people uh, think this is ridiculous, uh, but no one has presented any uh, program uh, to compete with this, uh, uh, this uh, capitalistic power structure and are tr are, uh, have been successful in trying to convince them at a conference table that uh, black people should uh, gain freedom, uh, equality, and justice. Uh, matter of fact, that uh, up until um, the time when black people started to uh, take to the streets and uh, destroying property and uh, destroying uh, uh, means of production uh, that we're focused on now and we're heard and we're heard simply because uh, this country only understands power. The whole country was erected upon uh, upon uh, power. So white people who are in control know very well what power is about. And um, we say that uh, black people should uh, give some consideration uh, to the, uh, the amount of strength that uh, we have latent, that uh, if it uh, were developed, then uh, we could negotiate because uh, concessions would be made when sees that uh, black people will no longer um, take no for an answer and that um, people are always very concerned, especially in America because it's basically a materialistic country, uh, they're very concerned about uh, the safe uh, keeping of their property that they've stolen and the freedom that they've stolen. Uh, if they see that uh, their very existence uh, uh, rests upon uh, the freedom of black people and all people, matter of fact, then uh, I'm sure they'll make some concession. The um, Black Panther program, and in fact the program of uh, all black organizations in varying degrees of intensity, it seems to me, uh, are demanding a fundamental change in the setup of, uh, of our society. It's always seemed to me that the uh, black community was the only community in this country where there was enough actual pressure to produce, or spearhead at least, any revolutionary change uh, in the in this country, and I see the enormous change uh, in the temper and the type of subject that black people wish to discuss. When I first was at the microphone eleven years ago, uh, I got nothing but the nonviolent types out of the South who talked about God and and brotherhood and uh, being allowed to sit down at lunch counters, or ride in buses, and uh, I kept wondering how long it would be before they would speak in different terms. Uh, now they speak in different terms. And it seems to me that what you're asking for, see, people are so hung up on this business of somebody's got a gun, and not really thinking beyond that, many of them, to the other points that are in the program, in the program of, of the Black Panthers. Because it's a revolutionary program. If right. every cop in Oakland dropped dead, tomorrow morning, uh, it wouldn't change the bad housing, it wouldn't change the lack of jobs, uh, it wouldn't change the, the, the rats and the poor health services and, and, and all these other things uh, that the ghetto population puts up with. Now, uh, you know, it seems to me that what you're asking for is revolutionary change. Um, yes, b before you have any change, first black people have to gain political power. And uh, this is why that uh, I thought it, it's uh, very necessary to, to explain where and what uh, this political power is, what stuff is it made of. Um, of course, uh, uh, as far as uh, the general structure is concerned, the general structure is an exploitive structure starting with the um, 
um, enslavement of black people uh, for the profit gain of the, the power structure. And uh, they used us and, until they didn't need us anymore, and then they uh, gave us a so-called Emancipation Proclamation, which really was an unemployment uh, pass. And um, that uh, we we remained unemployed until about World War One, where the white soldiers went off to fight, and they needed us in the factories uh, to again uh, exploit us. And uh, we became skilled, and uh, they uh, made very much money off of our skills. And the uh, soldiers came back, and they didn't need us in the factories anymore, and we became domestic servants uh, and um, janitors again. And uh, now that, uh, that they didn't even need us for this to any large degree, and we became uh, unemployed again. Uh, so the very uh, nature of society with the, uh, the greed for profit, uh, the, the, the system where the administrators, the ones who really control the government, remember not the government administrators, but uh, the people whom they are, are uh, representing. And they represent power blocks. They represent industrial blocks. They represent people who own land, people who own property. Black people have never um, uh, really, uh, it hasn't ever been in our best interest, and we haven't ever uh, <clears throat> gained uh, anything by the capitalistic system. <clears throat> the, um, uh, while capital capitalism, uh, uh, and when you think of capitalism, you assume the theory of uh, free enterprise, where uh, one person can compete with the other, and that uh, he has just as much right to, if he works harder, he will gain more land and more money. And uh, this uh, assumes something else, that the people will have this freedom to compete with each other, or the free enterprise theory, that black people have never engaged in free enterprise, that... Uh, when the move was uh, to the West, that black people were, were slaves, and that uh, when the cowboys and the frontiermen were uh, staking up land to compete with each other, that uh, we played no part in this. The only part we played in was to uh, make it possible for them to engage in free enterprise. So uh, free enterprise and capitalism has only been destructive to black people, and we're demanding a uh, drastic change, a uh, revolutionary, um, within our platform it's, it's explained that uh, uh, first that uh, to be born uh, in any country um, and uh, to be born in this country uh, that the man has a right to live and to um, to live he's going to have to provide for himself and his family so therefore it's up to the administrators to provide him with work and it has nothing to do with the amount of education he has because then that would be uh, a very cruel discrimination as they do today the man who's uh, uneducated uh, he doesn't deserve to live this is a line of thinking uh, I guess they operate upon the man who's educated he deserves to live and then uh, if you analyze it further, you'll see that uh, the man who's robbed uh, uh, historically for this living is the man who ends up with the advantage. And the people who are the victim who made it possible for him to be put in the situation of learning uh, were um, the people that he uh, exploited uh, for his own uh, personal interest. So. Uh, um, the Black Panther Party demands uh, full housing, uh, decent housing rather, uh, that's fit for uh, 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 human beings to live in. We demand full employment. Uh, this uh, country uh, with this system, with the institutions that, that it has, and that's private um, um, uh, private property and uh, capitalism or uh, or um, private ownership uh, has proven that they're either they won't give full employment uh, or they're not uh, uh, they can't or they just won't they're not interested in it so um, but as far as what are we going to do about this and that uh, if people are afraid uh, I don't believe that uh, they're really afraid of guns uh, if it was really so, if the majority of them were afraid of guns, then they would demand that their armed forces be disarmed. 
and uh, that their uh, police uh, uh, officer, or which the uh, actually the local army be disarmed and the national guard be disarmed, but they only uh, become afraid when the victim starts arming himself and uh, in a political fashion. And as far as uh, the demands that we um, that we say. Um, and how we go about this as far as the, um, uh, the power that uh, we're going to develop, that we are developing, I think is in keeping with all uh, colonized people. And uh, we are colonized people. We always have been. And uh, we're now we're sort of in a decentralized colony uh, because with the black community spread all over the country. But nevertheless, that uh, we're treated as uh, other people in foreign countries who are colonized. And uh, the establishment uh, acts very much like the colonizer and uh, uses us uh, for his interest whenever he wants to. And uh, our work never benefits us. It only makes him richer. But uh, in these other countries where people have, uh, uh, have uh, sought to gain their freedom, uh, they went about it in a way so that... Um, they could first gain power within the people, and they didn't go around talking about uh, um, uh, trying to persuade the um, the explorer that to change his ways. But perhaps they did it for a time, as we as, as we have done it for a time. But uh, they armed themselves, and um, they uh, uh, toppled uh, the explorer, and uh, then they uh, administered a uh, a. Um, a system that would be beneficial to most of us. There was no real contradiction between them uh, uh, tearing down and rooting out the system to uh, place a new one. As far as uh, uh, your statement that if uh, if the uh, police were uh, driven out of the community, there would be no change. I doubt this seriously uh, because of uh, certain things that has happened in other countries. For instance, in Cuba, where uh, a few armed men uh, with uh, Fidel Castro and Che Guevara went into the hills uh, to change the general structure. And uh, when they drove uh, Baptista's army out, who was aided by America, and thereby driving America out, uh, they did change their system. So they did get decent housing. Or they're attempting now to uh, get more uh, housing for the people. They are uh, creating the educational system uh, that's beneficial to most of the people. Uh, what kept them from it? Nothing but the gun. Uh, the gun of the reactionary army uh, that was uh, um, in the puppet government uh, that was... Um, actually uh, put there by America and supported by America uh, as, Mer as America uh, supports uh, many uh, puppet governments as they support the uh, puppet government of South Vietnam. Uh, so I'm inclined to believe that uh, if the might, if the force is uh, taken away or if the force is matched in, uh, through some strategic means uh, where that uh, it would be very difficult for the uh, local, national, and um, authorities to deal with the black community, then uh, the change will be uh, at hand. But before this time, before we develop this power, then uh, we'll rage because as soon as uh, they disagree with us, they will simply send in their... Uh, their police force and their National Guard, and then, as they did in Detroit, their 82nd Airborne. Uh, so it seems to be a trend that uh, that is simply uh, uh, power uh, understands power, and that uh, without this understanding, I don't believe there will be any change in this country. But that change would bring about revolutionary changes in the structure of our society if it could be achieved. Uh, it, it definitely will be uh, for the simple reason uh, if the Black Panther Party uh, has anything to say about it that we have uh, uh, we realize the uh, the uh, defects of the system now and that uh, matter of fact the corruption of the system and uh, we realize that uh, the whole uh, uh, institution and the system must be destroyed and replaced with a new one and uh, we talk about uh, uh, decent housing, and uh, within the platform, we uh, state that 
if the uh, private uh, landlords will not uh, make decent housing for us, uh, then uh, we will uh, uh, nationalize the housing uh, and uh, make decent housing for ourselves. And we will then put pressure upon the, uh, the uh, national government authorities to aid us uh, in this. Do you see any natural uh, or even necessary connection between the uh, black movement, uh, the black militant movement, and, uh, and the other black movements, which in a sense are saying the same thing, uh, but perhaps uh, not coupling it with quite as outspoken a position as, as yours, and the white radical movement? Um. I say that um, the um, liberation movements uh, in general are saying uh, primarily the same thing, that we want freedom and that uh, we're demanding an equal share of the wealth. Uh, but in many cases, I think that, uh, that uh, many of the groups don't understand uh, uh, the... the uh, the uh, problems or the um, that we'll have in operating within this uh, American system or this capitalistic system. Uh, many of the groups uh, uh, believe that uh, we can gain freedom uh, within the structure as it's organized now and uh, it's no need to change the general system. I think this is a, a basic uh, difference between uh, the Black Panther Party and uh, some other militant groups. And I think that's it's a matter of education for this group, which um, the Black Panther Party is also an educational vanguard that uh, we are attempting to educate the uh, black militants and uh, uh, the black uh, freedom movement in general and also educate the uh, white revolutionaries of the mother country who uh, many of them are sincere in their uh, quest for uh, freedom and justice and uh, many of them don't understand uh, what we'll have to do to gain this freedom and nor do they understand the changes that will have to be made in the general structure uh, so we attempt to um, to educate these uh, other groups uh, and the, the, uh, these other parts of the community what will be necessary to gain our freedom. And uh, when I say that uh, black people are armed themselves, I'm not, uh, uh, I don't mean to imply that we're arming ourselves to go out and um, say tomorrow and tear down uh, the American structure. What we are doing is um, very similar to what um, um, countries such as uh, Vietnam and uh, with the National Liberation Front, uh, countries such as China, I would like to explain the uh, relation, the relationship that goes on between uh, China and uh, say uh, Vietnam and America. Um, Number one, uh, the Vietnamese people uh, don't uh, have any uh, uh, illusion of uh, defeating America as far as tearing America down or uh, capturing many American prisoners, and uh, this is not their victory. Their victory is any time that America stops, op stops op oppressing them and uh, pulls out of their country. And um, that... Uh, the dialogue that goes on between uh, China and America, that uh, uh, China says that, uh, well, we have a thermonuclear blast and that uh, we know you have it also. So uh, either um, you will uh, give some consideration to the people of Vietnam or else uh, that you'll suffer a political consequence. And that, uh, but nothing happens. It's sort of a stalemate that uh, China doesn't drop any bomb because America realizes China's strength, that she has the potential to do this. And also, China realizes that America uh, has a uh, potential to uh, cause a great um, uh, people of China. So uh, there's a stalemate, but so either uh, you have to inflict the power 
or that uh, it's what I call flexing the power. You have to let the power structure know that you have this ability uh, to cause this consequence for them. And uh, when black people start letting the power structure know that we do have this ability to, uh, to, to deliver a consequence if we don't get our freedom, then uh, perhaps there will be some uh, changes made. But the kind of uh, sporadic and spontaneous violence uh, which uh, has happened and which is expected to happen again is not the kind of self-defense and building of a power block that you are basically talking about, is it? Uh, no, that um, I'm talking about something um, uh, in the line of uh, what the Vietnamese people talk about. The Vietnamese people are armed strictly for self-defense, and um, if, it were, if it were left up to them, they wouldn't fight a single day, I'm sure, uh, because they're suffering a great hardship uh, by having to engage in uh, warfare. And um, but they've worked out a strategy where that even though America has a great technology and a great uh, advancement and uh, the military weapon, uh, they offset this because with the strategy that they have developed, uh, which is called guerrilla warfare. And that uh, as far as this country is concerned, that uh, I've heard many of the government officials and uh, the um, uh, corrupt local offic uh, officials talk about uh, talk about black people are going to uh, uh, attempt what they're saying in essence is black people are going to attempt to gain their freedom by force and uh, they're just going to suffer for it and uh, they, they uh, seem to think that uh, black people will continue to go out and try to match arm for arm that uh, black people uh, are learning now through the education of the uh, Black Panther Party and other uh, enlightened revolutionaries that um, the way to victory is a long one and uh, it, it won't happen uh, with trying to match the technological, uh, te technological developments that, that this country has. Uh, as far as the spontaneous uh, riots that the Black Panther Party stands against this and uh, at the present time, and I say at the present time because, um, um, well, number one, that um, we've observed uh, other people getting their freedom, but uh, in this country we run into a situation that's different than uh, any of these other people uh, as far as the Latin American revolution and the revolution uh, in Southeast Asia that uh, the uh, terrain is much different, uh, that the people, it's uh, basically undeveloped countries and uh, uh, it's not an urban country. And here we, um, we, um, we have the problem of, uh, of uh, engaging uh, with the power structure in an urban situation and uh, we don't really have any uh, any um, any uh, blueprint to go by because uh, it hasn't ever happened in an urban uh, country uh, for some time but um, as I remember or as I've read that uh, the French Revolution uh, was uh, I think could be considered uh, somewhat of an urban uh, revolution uh, where France uh, fell and the bourgeoisie uh, fell and uh, it was uh, it uh, was similar to a, a urban riot in this country and um, I understand that the, the masses of the population was very uh, unorganized uh, but the um, the uh, their quest for freedom was so strong until uh, and they were unified in this quest they went out and uh, literally uh, tore the foundation out of France and the ruling class at the time so uh, as far as the future of our revolution um, I don't know what turns it will take but at the present time uh, I would advise against the spontaneous riots and uh, one way that this can be done is through uh, publications that our party has uh, a uh, weekly paper, the Black Panther is called, 
and um, we uh, teach the correct methods uh, for liberation uh, within the paper and uh, we um, see that uh, there's much need for uh, direction and we attempt to give this direction uh, to the uh, revolutionary people of America. I've been told by many people from the South that uh, in wide areas of the South now uh, the people are universally uh, armed uh, and yet there has been no overt attack on the white community but that nevertheless there are boundaries uh, which the white uh, authorities uh, no longer attempt to cross and in the meantime the organizations are attempting in some way with, uh, within the, the structure. Uh, a spontaneous riot for example that might be precipitated by you know anything whatever uh, in Detroit in Oakland uh, in Harlem uh, might in fact at this stage give the police uh, and the authorities the uh, opening that they are waiting for and at this stage perhaps the the strength of the of the militant aspects uh, of of, uh, of of the black movement uh, could be wiped out um well i um I doubt very seriously whether the, the uh, black movement for freedom can be wiped out. To do this, you would have to wipe out uh, 30 million black people uh, or more. So as far as the uh, leaders, uh, leaders come and uh, unfortunately uh, leaders go. Leaders are assassinated, uh, murdered, uh, but yet the uh, black people march on. And um, as far as I fear of being uh, wiped out, uh, that uh, we have no fear whatsoever. Um, of uh, being wiped out by the power structure because we realize that uh, as the um, the um, saying goes that uh, you can kill the dreamer but not the dream and uh, so we feel that uh, our teachings will go on and uh, if uh, if um, people will identify with the uh, the party's leadership uh, this is what we ask for. If we can instill uh, or project a, uh, a philosophy that is acceptable to the people, then we will serve our purpose. Um, as far as the police waiting for a chance to come into the black communities, uh, they have a chance in Detroit and a lot of people uh, in uh, Watts, uh, uh, even in uh, Oakland here, Newark, and uh, They've, they've come in and they've slaughtered people, and uh, by them slaughtering people, uh, they, which was very unfortunate, uh, but they raised the consciousness of many people. The people realized uh, what danger that they are in, and um, that was a, uh, in many cases, it, uh, there was a positive uh, effect as far as the, the people who survived the, uh, the, um, the uh, slaughter by the armed forces and uh, what it did uh, it uh, promoted the uh, consciousness it lifted the consciousness of the people and also it taught them uh, it was sort of a dress rehearsal of taught them if nothing more what not is to be done what what not to do and that is to uh, go in the streets in a very organized fashion and uh, be sitting ducks for um, uh, for the military to shoot them down and uh, I think that everyone will agree that uh, what happened in Detroit was much more sophisticated as far as maneuvers on the people's part than what happened in Watts that uh, in Detroit, uh, Detroit uh, learned from Watts and that's one of the reasons that the Black Panther Party are activists that uh, we realize that black people are either illiterate or semi-literate, uh, the masses of us, and that uh, we don't read very much, even though uh, certain tactics are laid down in literature, but because uh, uh, we're not a reading people, that uh, we don't observe, but we do observe activity, and that uh, we're educated by our mistakes. and. Um, uh, every time that uh, there's rebellion, there, there's things learned, uh, community in general. And I think that uh, this is not only true of this country, 
It's true of uh, every other country where uh, a resistance and a, even a, a successful revolution occurred. That the people, uh, one of the reasons that um, you have a small group of people like 12 men in Cuba who went to the hills, those 12 men, I'm sure, uh, they realized that they couldn't uh, uh, topple the, uh, the uh, corrupt government of Cuba. But uh, they also realized that the people were uh, illiterate, uh, they were not readers, but at the same time, they, uh, they, the people basically were activists and they identified with successful action. We have to. In this community, uh, there has been a great deal of attention focused on this whole situation, partly because of your case, partly because of the Hutton case, the Eldridge Cleaver case. Uh, I personally have had a sort of hope, uh, I can't put it more than that, that this area is more aware and has become increasingly aware down through the years, particularly the younger people in the community, beginning with the Huac riots, the FSM, uh, the draft resistance movement. Uh, all sorts of, of uh, uh, growth which has taken place in this community. I'm told by people who visit this part of the world from other parts of the United States that there is a perceptible difference in the whole political climate of this area. Right now, there are white people, uh, not only the coalition with the uh, Peace and Freedom Party, which developed at their conference, but uh, unorganized uh, white people who are asking and meaning it, I think, what they can do. Uh, do you feel that there uh, is a possibility that in this area, at least, we might be able to bring about some of the basic changes which would be necessary to have a slide community and that it could possibly be done through political and organizational and educational means. I mean, what is the role of, of the white person in this community who genuinely wishes to align themselves with the struggle for black liberation in the full sense of that word? Um. In the first place, I would like to start again and make something quite clear because uh, people refuse to accept it as a truth and that uh, that uh, I think it's very true. And the, and the first thing is let's get uh, what, what politics is about again. And uh, our definition uh, is that uh, politics is a war without bloodshed and war is politics with bloodshed. Even though politics has particular its, its particular characteristics uh, that are peaceful in nature, when these uh, characteristics are exhausted, and that uh, the people who are demanding uh, don't get what they want, then politics is continued, and it usually ends up into a physical conflict, which is called war, and uh, which is a very political action because the people are still trying to achieve uh, their liberation, freedom, and justice. So um, I make no division between uh, the politics of war and uh, the, po the other characteristics of politics. I think at this point that uh, the black people over um, a few hundred years have uh, exhausted uh, the peaceful means. I think that we've gained everything we can possibly gain through peaceful means and that uh, now it's uh, at a point where white people if they uh, have not, if they don't think they've exhausted the means to bring about change, then they could put pressure upon uh, the uh, controllers of the means of production and the uh, government officials to uh, uh, to uh, stop their uh, oppressive ways to uh, to uh, revolutionize the government, to uh, to change the system completely so that. Um, 
the people will be in control of the means so we can employ ourselves. And also within this, uh, it's very complicated in this country because uh, it's my belief that black people uh, have a right to uh, secede the Union uh, and uh, be a free republic uh, if they so desire. And uh, one of the demands that we make is that um, after we gain uh, uh, the necessary power, then uh, it's part of our program, matter of fact, that we will uh, uh, we will uh, ask for a plebiscite set up by the UN, and we'll have uh, um, uh, UN uh, uh, advisors to uh, come in to uh, to uh, to uh, see that black people uh, get a vote and uh, we will vote as a people to see if we want to stay a part of this country or not. Uh, we've never uh, been treated fairly in this country. We've never received justice in this country. And many black people are disillusioned with the, uh, with the uh, position uh, that we have here and that uh, we might want uh, some land of our own. But as far as uh, what right, white um, people who are uh, conscious of the uh, shortcomings of the uh, this uh, structure? Uh, they can uh, aid the uh, uh, revolutionary people of the black community, and uh, they can also put uh, pressure upon the government and upon the uh, private owners uh, to uh, change the system. And when I say, excuse me, change the system, uh, I'm. Uh, I'm uh, also including that I don't believe that uh, the private owner uh, can actually uh, give uh, full employment. Uh, number one, because of his uh, because of his uh, profit motive, that uh, he's only going to uh, try to get richer and uh, um, to uh, pay the people as little as possible. So uh, I think that they have a tremendous job on their hands to uh, to change the basic economical structure of the country. And uh, I don't know any time in history where a government has been changed, uh, where uh, you had a private uh, profit uh, motive there, and suddenly they changed and became humanitarian and uh, instituted a, a socialized government. And uh, that the Black Panther Party uh, advocates uh, the people owning the means of production, the people owning the housing, or controlling the housing through elected uh, elected uh, administrators, and so that then these administrators would be at the mercy of the people, and the administrators will uh, will uh, organize the people's uh, wealth in such a manner where the people uh, enjoy uh, a high standard. Um, I don't think that uh, I, I don't think that uh, there, there's ever been a time in history where this change has co have come have has come through a uh, through any peaceful means. Although uh, I would like to see this, uh, I would like to see it happen for the first time in this country. But I doubt seriously whether uh, uh, that this will happen. Well, many of the of the programs which are suggested. Uh, by uh, people in the white community uh, are things which might um, help a few individuals. Uh, I gather that you would prefer uh, the uh, interested members of the white community uh, to address themselves to the basic uh, structure uh, rather than to try to uh, oh, improve conditions slightly uh, by uh, various types of, of, uh, of, of reform. Uh, that kind of thing, I think, uh, is something that many people are interested in trying to do, and with good will. But uh, it doesn't seem to me that what you say uh, adds up to being uh, that that would be what would be really acceptable. In other words, you can go into the ghetto and you can uh, open day nurseries, or you can uh, uh, you can uh, get uh, a better medical clinic, or 
uh, you, you can do some of these things. These are things that I think many people in the white community uh, would be happy to, to try to do something about, and that there are probably people in the black community who might welcome this. But this is not really what you're talking about. Um, or do you think that the two things can work together? Do you think that in the effort to try to improve the surface uh, manifestations of our society, that people learn something which would lead them uh, uh, to agree with your point of view? I think that uh, black people welcome uh, any uh, solution, uh, a short-term solution that will ease the burden. And uh, the Black Panther Party uh, uh, more or less attempts to uh, interpret the desire of the community and then uh, organize uh, their uh, desires in some uh, systematic fashion so that uh, we could um, uh, set up uh, an administration to give them what they want. Now, uh, as far as uh, 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 the Black Panther Party welcomes uh, any uh, change in the community, for instance, if if someone interested person uh, wanted to uh, give money to the black community so that we can set up our uh, uh, day nurseries, hospitals, and uh, so forth, that uh, we welcome this effort. Uh, because it, it it doesn't even uh, it doesn't even uh, uh, it doesn't even uh, it wouldn't e it wouldn't even it wouldn't even be uh, in a counter revolutionary fashion as it is in in some other countries that I can imagine that where uh, many uh, progressive or revolutionary people would speak against this uh, for the simple reason it tends to uh, to give the people the illusion that they can gain their freedom uh, through these short term um, uh, reforms. Uh, in this country, black people are so frustrated, uh, black people have been uh, enslaved so long until uh, uh, no one can give them, no one can pay them off or with a short reform to satisfy us. Uh, if this were the case, then the poverty programs would have stopped all insurrections, uh, but the poverty program has not stopped uh, the rebellions. Uh, even though, as far as the poverty program is concerned, that we don't speak directly against the poverty program, we educate the community and show them where the poverty program will not, uh, um, will not liberate us. Uh, the poverty program is just what uh, it says it is. It's a program for poverty, and uh, it's a program to perpetuate pro poverty. And uh, even though a few people, a handful of people in the community are... Um, quote, uh, help, uh, it ends up that uh, the people who need the help, uh, uh, who don't need the help are getting uh, most help out of it, and these are the people who are uh, highly educated and uh, they're getting the, the incomes, the large incomes from the poverty program. Uh, so uh, as far as the black community is concerned, it wouldn't stifle a liberation move for some interested people who happen to be naive to come and to uh, give monies for uh, for little reforms, um, a few of our people will be helped, and uh, but the mass of our people will not be uh, deceived that uh, this is the answer to the problem. The answer is more basic than that. The answer is um, is a is a complete change because we know that these little reforms won't give full employment. We know that these uh, reforms will not uh, make decent housing for all of our people. And um, that because it won't make decent housing for all our people, then the revolution will go on. If it did make uh, decent housing, full employment, uh, justice in the courts, then uh, of course uh, it wouldn't be a reform, then it would be a revolutionary thing. And we would welcome it wholeheartedly because it would not only save uh, uh, many white people from uh, destruction and will save many black people. What else would you like to talk about, Huey? Um, one point is that uh, the, uh, our, the Black Panther uh, Party's program <coughs> uh, is a uh, 
a program that can be instituted immediately with uh, what we just finished talking about was uh, certain minor reforms. Uh, this country is not even prepared to give minor uh, reforms. The Black Panther program can be interpreted on a level where it's uh, simply a reform program. And that, uh, for instance, uh, we demand uh, that the police uh, the, that acts as an occupying army in our community withdraw, be able to um, set up a, uh, a uh, judicial structure and also a police structure so that uh, we will have people patrolling, excuse me, and safeguarding our community who are who have respect and esteem. Excuse me who have respect and esteem for the um, the black community. We demand that uh, if we're going to have police in our community that they live in our community and that uh, we are we constantly suffer from a uh, uh, from unfair trials. Whenever we're brought to trial we're tried by uh, not members of our peer group as the Constitution gives us a right uh, but we're on, uh, we're tried by an all-white middle-class jury, with uh, sometimes one black middle-class person in the jury, who doesn't understand the community either. That um, we demand that we have a court structure that's controlled by our community, and uh, these are are some little things that uh, small reforms that uh, the power structure uh, are unwilling to give, and that. Uh, we, uh, but within our platform, uh, as I said, that it can be interpreted on a level, we realize that the reforms won't uh, give liberation, but uh, in the platform and the uh, ten points of what we believe, that uh, then we express the, um, the desire uh, for a complete uh, change in the structure, and we point out the, uh, the, uh, the uh, oppressive uh, uh, seemingly innate uh, oppressive uh, uh, things uh, in the uh, structure as it exists. Uh, we make a point that uh, we want all uh, black prisoners released from the many uh, jails and prisons and that um, this is this seems uh, uh, very radical but in fact we realize that uh, about uh, 99 uh, percent, or I think I would be safe to say 100 percent of the black prisoners haven't received a fair trial, and that uh, the Constitution of the United States already uh, gives us a right to have this, and the power structure doesn't even follow uh, its own Constitution. So this is why that we can expect uh, uh, really little from the power structure when uh, the power structure uh, doesn't even live up to the things that it promises and gives to the rest of the citizens in the country. So uh, black people are slowly, well, up until this point they were slowly, and now they're rapidly realizing uh, the shortcomings of the structure, and uh, they are going about to make a change, and it's happening now from the grassroots level. Uh, people uh, seem to divide, attempt to di to divide the two movements into uh, into uh, two separate uh, two separate categories. They talk about the uh, peace movement, uh, the nonviolent movement. They talk about the uh, the crazy radical uh, black militants, you know, and um, they. Um, they seem to think that there, there, there has been up and t uh, they think to seem that uh, they seem to think that there, there are two different uh, tactics that are being used, and I disagree with this. Uh, I think that uh, all of the things that uh, have been gained, uh, and that's very little that has been gained uh, through the uh, the nonviolent or the peace movement has only uh, been gained because uh, there was a latent force uh, behind them and of course at the negotiating table and when these uh, nonviolent demonstrators uh, will go down uh, the power structure uh, they're not complete fools they see that uh, there's unrest and that these people 
who are participating are uh, behind them. They look, the power structure looks over their shoulder and they see uh, destruction behind. They see uh, uh, the masses of the people prepared to go up in arms. Um, uh, many people in the, the so-called nonviolent movement, uh, they don't realize what the power structure is seeing when, uh, when it looks over their shoulder. And uh, maybe they don't see it because, after all, they have their backs to the masses. And the power structure, they're facing the, uh, the masses by facing the nonviolent uh, person. Uh, only he's seeing more than the nonviolent person is seeing. He's seeing that uh, if uh, the things that King talked about, if they're not gained, then uh, there's someone behind King who happens to be illiterate, uneducated, and uh, who understands only one program, and that's the program of physical force. And these are the people that we represent. And yet you are using uh, every method which is open to you. Uh, I presume uh, that that's the reason why uh, uh, you have are engaging, in fact, in electoral politics, uh, as uh, exemplified by the uh, coalition with the Peace and Freedom Party. Uh, with the, as in, uh, most of them haven't uh, ever divorced the. Uh, they've understood the the uh, apparently two movements but as we we see it is always it always has been one and it's one now but what has happened <coughs> suddenly uh, those people that the uh, power structure was uh, were looking at and are very afraid of have become somewhat articulate and uh, they now can not only um, uh, deliver the force they also can express uh, their desires and I think that uh, that Malcolm uh, Malcolm X uh, pointed it out very well when he uh, referred to uh, to um, to Martin Luther King and uh, later uh, just before his assassination where he was uh, attempting to unify uh, the uh, the complete uh, black movement and that uh, he realized that uh, King wasn't asking really for anything different than that he was asking for, that uh, the only uh, different was that he realized, uh, Malcolm X realized, that the power structure would only change when some force uh, was even uh, either inflicted or force uh, was threatened uh, to be inflicted if, if black people need what they want. So uh, at this point, the, uh, the, the black uh, militants or uh or uh now voicing and articulating their uh the grievance of the uh the grassroots of the community who they happen to be a part of uh in the past that the nonviolent movement was always led by the middle class blacks uh who were interested in a black middle class problem and uh, up until uh, the later days uh, of uh, uh, Martin Luther King, uh, you could see a, uh, a, uh, a more of a merge uh, that Martin Luther King was making with the black militant because then he was, he started, I believe that he started to realize uh, where the real strength was and the real strength was uh, in the political power that we have and the political power is in the grassroots of the community who uh, don't believe in negotiating and uh, they uh, need representatives to negotiate for them as far as articulate a program uh, and articulate their desires but uh, they are the activists and they are the people who cause all change and uh, they're the makers of world history uh, as they've always been and uh, now, the uh, as far as my uh, uh, running for office with the uh, Peace and Freedom Party uh, on a Peace, uh, Peace and Freedom Party ticket, um, is basically an educational thing for the community. Now, the community can uh, renew their um, respect for the political uh, arena to the point where. They, re they will realize then that what their desires are will be expressed 
and that uh, they will not be promised that the uh, the political representative or namely that that I couldn't um, make any changes and that I wouldn't promise any changes and I wouldn't compromise just as they don't want compromises uh, they want uh, freedom now and that uh, that I would go on doing primarily what uh, I was doing before I was educating the community and organizing the community into a political force so that uh, the black community will be able to gain uh, the victory that uh, we all must have. But as far as um, uh, negotiating freedom in the political arena, that uh, there's no, uh, uh, we don't live on the illusion that uh, this is possible. But uh, as a spokesman for the black community, uh, the Black Panther Party uh, will uh, go on being the spokesman. And uh, if the black community chooses to uh, elect uh, me for office, then, uh, then uh, they will see that uh, their, their uh, voice will be heard, uh, the community uh, will be organized, and uh, there won't be any promises of uh, small changes and, uh, and there won't be any promises of uh, a gradual change, and there won't be promises of uh, wait until tomorrow and you'll gain your freedom. That uh, it was basically to uh, see if the black community, how much the black community identified with the uh, solutions that the Black uh, Panther Party has. Uh, if the black community uh, identifies, then we would know that we've reached um, uh, we've interpreted the, their desires in the correct perspective. If they uh, if they disagree, then of course uh, I won't very many black people vote. So it's more or less an indication to uh, whether the Black Panther Party is doing the right thing. We don't claim that uh, we have all of the answers. Uh, we do promise a uh, uh, in sincerity an attempt to uh, to. Uh, uh, try to organize the desires of the community as we see it in some fashion, in some systematic fashion, so that it can be instituted. Do you feel that uh, that you have any um, appreciable hostility uh, on the part of uh, the uh, black bourgeoisie? That's one of the things which is frequently said: is that that. Uh, uh, there are many frightened black people who have uh, got jobs and uh, so on. Do you feel that they, uh, in fact, identify uh, with with your program, even if they don't do so openly, or uh, that there is a, a, a genuine cleavage within the black community as there is within the white community between those people who approve the system and those people who disapprove the system? Um, uh, as, as far as the, the black bourgeoisie is concerned, uh, that the, the first thing we have to realize is they only represent about 2% of all black people in the country. Uh, most black people uh, are in the black lower class, and that um, sometimes the black uh, middle class sees their interests uh, in as a little different than uh, the interests of most black people and um, of course some of them are are uh, have very good jobs uh, a very high income and uh, are they're in privileged positions uh, black and uh, exploited and discriminated against but yet uh, they're their uh, position is somewhat uh, privileged uh, when uh, attempt to uh, correlate it or relate it to uh, the general masses of black people. And uh, I think that, that uh, they are afraid of their position many times because they know who's in control and that's the white uh, power structure. So uh, some of the demands that we make that some members of the black bourgeoisie will speak against uh, and uh, even though in the long run that will be beneficial to them because a change will occur whether they like it or not because they don't represent the uh, majority of the people, of the black people, 
Um, but I think that the black bourgeoisie can can um, um, be um, be related to the historical privileged position of the house Negro. Uh, that uh, even though we're enslaved, that uh, the house Negro or the house servant. Uh, received a little better treatment than uh, the Negroes that worked in the fields and uh, or the black people that worked in the fields and uh, their interest sometimes was a little different because they were afraid that they too might be put out into the field if they didn't go along with the program of the house master who was uh, the white people uh, who owned the house and um, that uh, Sometimes uh, when the uh, field uh, uh, black people would attempt to make changes uh, as far as uh, burning the master's house down, they would be snitched off by the, by the house Negro. Uh, this didn't happen in all cases. In some cases, the house Negroes uh, made certain potions to poison the master. And I think that this is uh, true uh, even today, that there's some uh, who realize uh, uh, that they are enslaved as we are, and they are attempting to put poison into the system. Um, generally speaking, uh, the black bourgeoisie will have to be put into line by the, the masses of, uh, of black people. And uh, the black bourgeoisie only exists in this privileged position because of the efforts and the, uh, the suffering of black people. That uh, we have now, we have what you call uh, universal tokenism, where uh, black people can, um, if you if you're privileged enough to get an education, and this providing that your family has a certain economical status to start with, that. Uh, you're, you can get out of college and uh, even get a master's degree and you're promised that you, you can get any job that's uh, open practically. Uh, you can even get uh, high ranking jobs in, uh, in private businesses. Uh, and this is to deceive the masses of black people to say, look at this man, that he's black and that uh, he has an education and he has this job. And uh, you could do the same thing. So uh, you should stop uh, pressing so hard upon us and you shouldn't uh, uh, cause uh, revolts uh, because it's your own fault that you don't have the education and you could have it and we don't really discriminate because we have a black man here and um, black people have been disillusioned by this tactic uh, but now we see that uh, uh, just employing one or two black people or uh, doesn't uh, doesn't uh, mean that uh, the uh, all black people, if they receive an education and if they uh, had a, an income high, uh, that they could uh, they could uh, or have an income high enough and then have an education, they could have this uh, this uh, position inside of the power structure. That uh, they realize that the power structure is unable to employ all of its people. Uh, it's a matter of fact against uh, the um, it's against the, uh, the the whole logic of the whole system because the system if it doesn't have anyone to exploit it, then it uh, it uh, becomes threatened from within from uh, the people who are working because they see that uh, they uh, don't have control and then they just demand higher demands for to get an equal share of the wealth. In other words, that they see that where they're making a uh, hundred dollars a week, that uh, the owners are making thousand dollars a week. But yet they're doing all the work that are producing the wealth for these private owners, and that um, the um, the black people realize that uh, the first thing not uh, the first thing is not to get an education uh, because. Uh, poor black people aren't they're too concerned about just uh, irking out a um, uh, living to, to eat each day uh, to clothe themselves to uh, to uh, pay money or have the leisure time to get an education so the first thing is not an education the first thing is full employment with a high, high standard so that then uh, uh, we can afford to educate our children and we'll have the leisure then to uh, 
to indulge in uh, certain uh, uh, academic pursuits so that we become very uh, uh, cultivated. Um, so the first thing is, uh, first things first, is uh, full employment and uh, that many people in the black bourgeoisie, maybe they are deceived that uh, blood who can hardly eat each day can uh, sacrifice uh, a member of the family to, uh, to go to school. I think this is a somewhat an absurd conclusion to reach, that the first thing is to straighten out the economical system and then education will follow. Would you like to discuss uh, any further the business of the police uh, and uh, also uh, supposing the, the police were not uh, armed, uh, would that make any difference in the, in the attitudes of the, uh, of the people in the ghetto? In other words, does their power lie in, in their guns? Well, you must realize that the, the uh, police force are only uh, an extension of the military services that um, the police are, uh, the, uh, they handle local security and um, the National Guard, international uh, security, uh, the National Guard, national security, and the armed force, and international security. So, uh, dis disarming one segment of their army, their oppressive army, w would not uh, be sa would not reach to the satisfaction of uh, black people. Uh, that if they were to disarm totally, disarm their uh, national guard and also their mil military, then uh, we could talk about some uh, peaceful changes. Are there any other uh, subjects that that occur to you, Huey, that you would like to talk about? Uh, well, to 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 uh, to uh, for, first to clear this up, uh, that statement sounds somewhat absurd. Uh, even uh, you know, even think about uh, disarming their uh, national guard or their military. Uh, and it's equally absurd to think that black people uh, will not talk about arms when you have an armed uh, administration to keep you in line and to keep you oppressed. Uh, <clears throat> Any time that you have a, uh, a, a government that maintains a, a regular army and a regular police force and uh, the people are disarmed, or a segment of the people are are disarmed. Then the people are either slaves or they're potential slaves. Any time that this uh, these administrators or this army decide to subject them to slavery, and uh, I think this is um, uh, this is about universally true, and uh, that I would like to. Uh, to uh, repeat for emphasis that either they're slaves or they're they're uh, subject to slavery, and uh, that's to answer the people to uh, point out that uh, well some governments uh, have an armed force and the the, um, the people are not enslaved, but uh, the people uh, are subject to slavery at any time, and I think that uh, that. Um, that uh, historical events will bear me out that, uh, for instance, you get uh, many uh, military coups. You had a coup in Algeria when Bambela was uh, ousted uh, by the military. And uh, you had uh, a military coup when, uh, when uh, Nkrumah was ousted from uh, Ghana. And that uh, one of the basic mistakes that these, these men um, that uh, they didn't arm the people so the people could be a, uh, to keep the military in check and that uh, the military uh, whenever it got ready to simply just took over the power so uh, the people must uh, be armed uh, as long as the, the, the administrators maintain an armed body.